we would like to thank uh, Pinnacle Series and Star Pakistan for organizing this. I wish them the very best and I think they are doing a great job highlighting executives in various uh, areas and I think again it's, it's a good message for the youth on how to learn from uh, senior people. Assalamu alaikum, this is Madasir, your host for this exciting episode of Pinnacle. Today we have a renowned individual from the academia. I don't need to introduce him, let's go directly to him. Assalamu alaikum, mm -hmm. Talib Saab, how are you? Walaikum Assalam, good to fine, thank you. Great to have you, it's an honor for me actually to, 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 to have you in this uh, episode of uh, Pinnacle. Of course, you are a renowned name in the industry, you don't need any introduction. So let's jump into the meat of that discussion. So I was uh, actually looking at, at your profile and it's quite interesting, especially if we start with your own education and then you, you had a degree in uh, the systems engineering and then you got a like, master's in the finance side of the house. So if you talk about that for a minute, probably that will give us an idea. And why did that transition happen or what was the rationale behind that? So I grew up in the uh, 70s, you know, mid 70s. So at that time, you know, our I think it's happening nowadays, but not to the extent that it used to happen uh, during those times, that your education path was set by your parents, especially That's your true. father. So when uh, we were growing up, our siblings, so at that time there were two uh, career paths. So either you take one of those two or you are, you are, you are, you are no one. So one, of course, was engineering and the That's other true. was uh, medicine. Medicine, very true. So, up to now, many things have changed and uh, there are many career paths available. So, at that time, when I was doing my metric, uh, I did my metric from Islamabad, then went to FC College That's in really Lahore. Nice. Yeah, because uh, when I was in Islamabad, there were very few hostels available in colleges. Because at that time, my father was posted to the UN. Uh, to Nairobi, nice. Nairobi, Kenya. So I wanted to, he wanted me to finish my inter, so he moved me to FC College Lahore because there was a hostel facility there. So I moved there, uh, but I was there just for a year because at that time there was a turmoil. There was a, you know, 77, you know that, the, the history. So he asked me to come to Nairobi, so I went to Nairobi, studied in an American high school for a year in Nairobi, Kenya and then went to University of Arizona and of course engineering was... Of course, of course. <laughs> so As you I was told said, to do engineering. You said, yeah. So your question that why from engineering to economics? Exactly. Because Especially at that point yeah. in time, as you rightly said, okay, nowadays there are okay. so many options. But in good, good old days, I mean, that was not a... So engineering was never my choice. Beautiful. So I, I did my engineering degree. But uh, uh, then I wanted to go into social sciences. So I think the best fit for me was economics. So I did my economics from University of Arizona, taught there also. Oh. Okay. Because as graduate students, you're allowed to teach. Either of course, you become a teaching yeah, assistant yeah, or teaching a, a research, or research, research assistant. So I became a teaching assistant. I was a f assigned courses to teach in economics, micro and macro. I did that and then again, so that's my background about my education. That's exactly, thank you for that. Uh, so the, the the next question was about the same thing what you just uh, going to say okay I'm sure I mean when you were coming back you had a big plan to do to do what you say the payback to the society so uh, I think you worked for a, uh, a, a, a for a while and then you moved into this academia and all that so would you like to share some of your thoughts in that regard I think I had two chances to stay back um, abroad uh, one was after I completed my degrees and the other was later, uh, at, a, at a later time. And both the times it was, again, my father influenced me to come back. Okay, I mean, we, you know, as youngsters, uh, we see a lot of uh, glamour, staying abroad, you know, I mean, a lot of things. Uh, he has, he had been in the civil service throughout his career. He retired as the Chief Secretary Sindh. Uh, so he said, no, you need to come back and you need to serve the country. Exactly, that's uh, so. You know, I said yes, so we, uh, I came back in 1986, uh, back you know, from the States, joined uh, DFI, uh, at that time uh, DFIs were a big thing. Um, uh, I worked there uh, for almost a decade uh, and uh, learned a lot because I had very 
of course. Good, good bosses uh, to learn from uh, in, in, in that organization. And that also, in a way, uh, you know, developed me into, uh, uh, into a professional that, uh, you know, how to work. Uh, you know, when I joined, I was part of the team, then how to lead a team. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, th going through various stages, going through various departments in that organization. There were, uh, I worked in uh, economics department, I worked in HR department, I worked Very in, nice. uh, you know, I mean, a uh, diversified, so portfolio, diversified right? portfolio. Yeah. So that gave me uh, a good uh, uh, experience in that organization. So again, uh, uh, one of the uh, relevant questions actually, which we had been discussing uh, uh, earlier, that uh, entrepreneurship. So you are one of the biggest advocate of that one. So uh, uh, my question would be more in light of what we were discussing and what's happening in the country. I mean, how it can help us in general. I mean, in particular, yes, of course, as an individual, it will help that individual. And in general, for the society, especially when we are seeing uh, these uh, uh, import challenges and other things. So what do you think? I mean, how it can help uh, both individual as well as the country yeah, or society. Yes, I, I think I'm a strong advocate of it. I think I'm, uh, I myself would classify or categorize myself as a social entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I mean, when we decided uh, to set up this institution in 1994, yeah. so again, that was a new experience. We had, to, we had to meet uh, people. It was a to, new concept actually yeah. at that time. I think when Yeah, there were not many universities yeah, exactly, over here, exactly. hardly. I think that was the time in mid-90s when uh, you know, maybe few private sector universities That's were true. there That's and, uh, you know, hardly uh, any uh, universities were there in private sector. Uh, so we felt, I think my father was, uh, when he retired as chief secretary, he thought to do something in education. So we sat down and we met, uh, you know, um, people, some businessmen, because we had to raise funds to do all this thing. and. Uh, so, uh, so we went through that stage of being an entrepreneur, but of course, when I uh, categorize myself as a social entrepreneur, it's a social entrepreneur. It's not for profit type of entrepreneurship I, 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 because I, I, this is a not-for-profit yeah, so institution. More for the society. Uh, yeah. So, uh, to answer your question, why entrepreneurship? Why have uh, that type of stress on that? I think in the way our country is progressing, uh, you know, very few. You know, 80s was the time that many projects were being set up, textile and you know, many others. But all of a sudden there had been a decline. So That's industrialization true. is, in a way, yeah. has slowed down. Exactly. Okay, uh, so nowadays, uh, you know, there are mergers, there are acquisitions. So job market is shrinking. That's, that's true. And uh, you need to find new opportunities. In right. That and and the youth population is Especially expanding. Millennials okay. So they, they are they are, yeah. they are people graduating from universities. They are looking for jobs. So I think this concept of entrepreneurship is that to basically move from being a job seeker to being a job creator. Creator. That's okay. that's true. So, yeah. Exactly. So, and that it doesn't mean that if you're a job creator that you know you set up a company with hundred employees. Yeah. Even if you set up a company with two or three employees, you are not a burden to the society. You are not, you're, 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 you're creating jobs. So you are creating those three jobs. You are creating those four jobs. So um, again, it's easy said than done. I mean, uh, being an entrepreneur is not that easy. I mean, it's true. I think one out of ten startups fail. But you learn from those failures, of course. And many people have learned from failures, and now they have successful ventures. So the whole idea was to at least have you know, about 20% of our graduates setting up their own businesses. Uh, now, uh, so at that time, you know, many of our graduates went on and set up their own business. And some of them are now very successful uh, businesses. They, they have successful businesses. Right now, uh, so we have an incubation center and we are trying to now encourage those projects which are technology driven. That's, that's the future, of course. So for example, uh, you know, one of our students was, uh, he, he was able to come up with a, a very economical 3D printer. Uh, so now he's, you know, marketing that. Very and nice. he's doing well, you see the lamp there. Yeah. Uh, that, that has come from that 3D printer. Very nice. So, uh, uh, so I think, and this Saturday on the 14th, uh, we are graduating eight 
of our uh, in, uh, from, the those, incubation, from the incubation, the incubation center. Yeah. And again, all of those projects are technology driven projects. Very nice. Good to and they're that. not just from our university, they're from other universities. So we are encouraging other universities also uh, right, uh, to, to, to uh, use uh, our incubation uh, center. That's and, true, we, that's true. and one unique thing about our incubation center is that we also finance them about 500,000 rupees. Uh, to, nice. to to come up it's with the the start for prototypes and things like that of because course. they need funds for that also. Of course, they, they do need So yes, uh, I think entrepreneurship is uh, one of uh, the vision of this institute. I think it's my personal also desire that uh, we have more entrepreneurs. You mentioned about this, uh, learn from the failures. I'll come to that one because we are in the topic of academia. So let me just ask one more question and then we will go there. Um, uh, in, in IOBM, we also talk about the lifelong learning, especially the executive education. So, typically, we don't see the, that the mid-tier managers and the executive. I mean, they go back to the school once they graduate. So, you set up uh, this kind of facility for them or encouraging them for that one. So, what's what's your thought? Why it is important for them? I mean, my point is that that they should go back and then uh, recharge their batteries and get ready for the next challenges of their life. I mean, See, learning from, never stops. Exactly. So I think learning, you need, you need to, you know, I went to Oxford to do my leadership program in, when I was in late 50s. So that's uh, because I wanted to learn from senior people from other countries. Of course. Because you learn. So, I mean, you learn best practices, you learn from each other. And many areas, uh, you know, I mean, things are changing very rapidly. You know, just take an example of HR. You know, HR is not the same which it used, used to, to be. You know, it used to be called administration. Oh, it used to be bad. called Department of Administration. Yeah. It is no longer called Department yeah. of Administration. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, not that now they are very, uh, you know, fancy in, uh, names for HR departments. And um, HR has become a very, very strong component of every organization. Uh, organization, and, every organization. and so, exactly. so, 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 if you are old school HR. Yeah. Then you need to learn. You need to learn. You need to learn uh, new traits. You need to learn new things about HR, the policies. You know how HR functions. Uh, you know what type of uh, technology can be brought into HR. So this executive center is exactly that. Uh, it, you know we invite people from banks, from other industry, uh, to to come and uh, you know I mean, uh, for example, we just had a. Uh, a program just a couple of weeks ago on preventive maintenance that right. was for engineers right. that uh, you know uh, so the whole idea was that you know if you have these huge boilers or you have these machines in your factory then the machine tell should tell you in advance that I'm getting sick and that's true right? and uh, you know you need to take care of me otherwise I might go into and you know if one boiler is down you can lose about thousand dollars uh, an hour or five thousand dollars an hour, depending on the setup you have. So, so we, we try to introduce these innovative uh, short programs, one day, two days. Then we have nice. some diploma program. Very so, executive nice. center is just to, uh, in a way, enhance skills of those who are already there, but with new things that are coming up, they should know about those things. Right. So, Talib sir, you mentioned about uh, the how you learn from your failures. So would you like to shed a little bit more light on that? Okay. With challenges, with yeah. challenges, I think there are always opportunities. And th exactly. So, so one, exactly one, one has to grab to those opportunities. So we did that. Uh, yes, we sometimes do take decisions about programs which doesn't work out, but that's part of, you know, academic uh, uh, life that, you know, you try to, you know, Right now in Pakistan, there's a big challenge to introduce liberal arts. You know, I mean, you know, there are universities <laughs> offering liberal Very arts, true. but we also need to do that. Exactly. But uh, you know, we have to uh, because uh, you know, creativity in a lot of times, uh, you know, in a very stringent type of uh, curriculum, creativity is lacking, and it can only come through liberal arts. Uh, so, as I've said, we always face challenges. That you face, you know, right now we are facing challenges. You know, in terms of uh, we don't know what will happen to dollar. We import a lot of items like computers, like ACs, like many other things. Uh, so our operational cost, you know, usually uh, varies every day because you know, I mean, 
If dollar is uh, 235 today, it might be 240 tomorrow. That's true. That's what we were just So then we, earlier, our you know. budget goes off track. So there are challenges, but we have to, you know, learn from those challenges and we have to live with those challenges. Uh, another question actually, I mean, again, um, uh, since, I mean, you are one of those personalities who are larger than life. So that's why uh, one of the another question that comes in my mind, I mean, you are also associated. An individual, especially in an organization, cannot improve himself or herself unless there's a team behind it. That's true. You know, so that's there has to be a good board. team. Yeah. You know, a lot of things that maybe I get credit for it done by the team because I, I don't do uh, everything. I you know, uh, multitasking is there, but uh, you know, I mean, if there's a uh, if this university is known for its uh, research output, for example, then it's not me doing research. It's, it's, it's the faculty members doing research. Or if we are excelling in something, then it's the teamwork. Uh, so no, I mean, so it has to be, you know, team, uh, and I have to work with the team. So they are my colleagues. They are not my subordinates or anything like that. You know, we are all colleagues, and we have to work together. Yes, I'm part of, uh, you know, currently I'm president of Management Association of Pakistan, MAP. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I'd been uh, president of Marketing Association of Pakistan for a few years. This is all uh, a voluntary type of uh, uh, an assignment, but we have to make those organizations sustainable. So one job besides being president of this uh, institute is also to make MAP more sustainable, which we are trying to do. You know, 10 member, our executive council, they're all corporate leaders, so we work together. I'm also president of AMDIP, uh, which is Association of Management exactly. Development Institutions of Pakistan. And then of course, then I'm part of uh, many international, like there's a International Association of Universities, which IUBM is part of, where universities from all over the world are, are members. So I, as the president, part of there's an International Association of University Presidents, where presidents of universities are part of nice. uh, a consortium. Then there's an association of Commonwealth Universities where Commonwealth uh, countries uh, are, are part of that association. So yes, uh, that gives us a chance to show our presence at on international exactly. forum. On, on because forums, you, yeah. you're not, it's a global village. I mean, that term, terminology has been used quite often. Yeah. That we live in a global village, so we cannot work in isolation. So we have to work with uh, you know, our students go to around, we have an MOU with about 40 uh, different uh, universities in different countries. Our students go to, you know, Turkey, China, Malaysia, you know, many other countries, Japan. And also it gives yeah. them a chance to represent Pakistan Across abroad and right show them the British, that Pakistan is a great country and you have very smart youngsters smart people studying and because true. these kids when they go there they all always come back with A grades and you know they spend Good, a semester yeah. there and yeah. they take courses. Yeah. Unfortunately not too many students are coming here because of the you know but saying yeah. that uh, about uh, two Russian students are joining us next week. Very nice. They'll be here for a semester and the, and the credits are transferable so whatever ah, they, they, okay, you know, okay, they take right, here. Very nice. So those are so yes we uh, we are part of international forum and um, we, you know, we learn again from each other. Uh, that's the, what is works, happening yeah, in other countries. And so, uh, Talib Sahib, you mentioned about uh, the leadership in that in some form or shape. So, uh, I mean, I guess the way you are describing things, you're uh, one of those guys who lead from the front, I would say that. But it's still, I mean, we would like to hear it from you, from you your perspective on the leadership. You need to uh, listen to your team members. You need to see uh, what they are saying. You need to hear what they are saying. Uh, you need to be with them uh, at every step. Of course, you need to set goals for them. True. So that comes in our strategy. They're what will happen in the next five years? What are the expectations? Uh, how would they? Uh, what would they require required to do? And then, you know, my job would not be to every day push them, but my job would be to encourage them to see this is your target. You need to achieve achieve those targets. And, uh, Very nice. And once you achieve that with commitment, with ownership, then your institute will progress. Of course. So, as I've said, you know the the <coughs> way IUBM has progressed, uh, mashallah, in the last 27 years. Again, it's it's because of faculty members, because of the management, because of uh, you know you know vision of my late father was to to make this the best institution, and we are now uh, trying to you know follow that uh, vision to the core. That yes. 
Right. And so we are going for now, it's a very tough process. We are going for international accreditation, which is double A CSP, right. uh, which is the US. So all uh, top business schools are now member or are, are, are now accredited by, by this double A CSB. Okay. Uh, there's only one institution in Pakistan which has done it so far. There are a few others trying and we are one of those. Very nice. So inshallah next three, four years, yeah. we'll uh, be able to achieve that. Awesome. So since we are at the tail end of our discussion, so let's go for some light-hearted ones. So of course you are a dedicated professional educational second year specialist so of course I guess uh, and I'm sure actually it's difficult to do the what you call the work-life balance so we were talking to someone else so uh, I mean so they shared their point that we do the barbecue with the family or the kids soccer coach or something on these lines so do you do some of these things as well uh, I mean, to, to I'm a up? I'm a hardcore family man okay so I once I'm done from here I like to go home and relax so I have two granddaughters at Shana, home. Very nice. uh, so I am old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so I have two children, uh, a daughter and a son. Daughter is in, in the US, she has a son. So I'm also a nana. He's 16 months old, uh, my uh, grandson. And then I have two granddaughters. So one is four and a half and one is one and a half. Uh, I like to spend time with them. My wife keeps on complaining, complaining that I don't walk. I became a member of a golf club, but I never went there. <laughs> no, you need walking. Because otherwise, That's true, you know, of course, I mean, of course. That's uh, so my, uh, but uh, yes, I mean, in a way, you know, you have to meet uh, people. So you go for weddings, you go for dinners, you go for all these things. But my best, uh, as I've said, uh, relaxation is to be at home <laughs> with my kids, with my grandchildren. I used to travel a lot. Uh, my leisure time is with the family right. and friends. If you have, you know, friends, you get together with friends, have two, three hours of good time, you know, have dinner and go somewhere. So Multiple that's rounds of kadak chai, I would <laughs> say that. To have <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm a bit, uh, I should be walking or playing True. golf, uh, but uh, maybe inshallah. Charing Maybe I'm, when I'm close to 70, I'll do that. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's go for the best. So again, uh, the last question actually from our side or from my side. Uh, uh, any message, especially you mentioned about the millennials because uh, and they are, are the majority of our population and, and of course, I mean, we have high hopes with them and all that. So any, any specific message for them and anything in general you want to share with the broader audience? You know, if you look, look at top 10 things that Pakistan uh, in terms of output, so there will be many things in that. Either you talk about coal, you talk about wheat output, you yeah. talk about many other things. Yeah, exactly. Milk output, I think we are number two, number three, That's whatever. True. So God has given us resources. All the resources. I think one thing we have done with the youth is that us as leaders have failed completely. I mean, the way they have managed this country is totally, we could have done much far that better job, than yeah. What, what we see today. So my message to the youth is don't give up. <laughs> I mean, you know, we are, uh, you know, I think we have lived our lives. You know, youth, you know, with some say 40, 50 percent of the population, uh, you know, we, we, we need to send them a message that there's a bright future for you in this country. There's no harm in going abroad. It helps the country. Of course. You, know, you mean, go you abroad, you send remittances, and, and you learn. Yeah, that's true. That's you learn, uh, you know, uh, going abroad, then you come back, and you use that learning over here. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, don't give up on the country. I think this country has a lot to offer. Uh, you know, I mean, we have many opportunities in this country. Uh, you know, uh, us as a university, we are not just now concentrating on four year degree programs or two year degree programs. We are also trying to now target those youth uh, who can be given some sort of skill. You know, I mean, they can uh, become uh, web developers. Exactly. They can become, exactly. you know, I mean, yeah. there are many areas. More relevant to what's so six months today. course, exactly. and, and you know, they can go home and be a freelancer and of earn five hundred dollars, thousand dollars. Online jobs are available. Yeah, I mean, Rather US will send. If you are good, they will hire you. They will pay you thousand dollars a month. It's true. Yeah, that's that's true. Nowadays, it's two, two lakh thirty-five thousand rupees. <laughs> yeah, so you see, you earn a good money. So the thing, so to the youth is, 
you know this country is great i think our forefathers have sacrificed uh, a lot for this country uh, we should love this country we uh, we look at we should look at opportunities in this country uh, we should try to produce locally mm-hmm. which sometimes we import a lot of things which we can produce locally uh, you know so if we set our mind positive direction we can achieve a lot definitely you know we can achieve a lot for this uh, country and my, i think my biggest satisfaction is when i meet our graduates when i meet our alumni it makes me the happiest person when i see them successful at a c level positions at uh, you know very uh, successful entrepreneurs you know working in corporate working abroad <laughs> whether i'm going to a restaurant whether i'm going to a wedding whether i'm traveling whether i'm at the airport never happens that i don't meet one of our graduates always bump up it's they're somewhere. always they're <laughs> always around and when i talk to them and i ask them and when they tell me that you know i mean so that that is i think the 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 proudest moment for me and of course, for of can, course everyone can, here that you know your graduates uh, are doing so well very so, nice so youth has this country i think the youth will Very take nice this country to new heights the recipe for the success yeah, i mean we will become you know yeah. i mean we can be in somewhere in the top if our youth get together and you know sure. and work hard i mean nothing can be achieved without that uh, that uh, motivation without hard work so if you're on that path i think this country has you know i mean there's nobody can stop uh, it endless yeah. opportunities in this country Awesome. Thank you, Tarif Sahab. I know a very interesting discussion is going on. Thank you. Really appreciate actually that you took the time and shared your words of wisdom with mm, us. Thank you. And as you rightly said earlier, that I mean you want to walk more, so probably you will try to meet next time you on the golf course. That's what the plan is. <laughs> no, okay. Thank Great. you, Tarif. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.